If you play video games, you will, by the nature of the medium, experience a whole lot of death. Or if you play Pokemon, fainting, I guess. <coughs> Call it what you want, Pokemon. We all know that Pidgey's not getting up. And nobody in a game is going to die more times than you, the player, over and over as you battle your way doggedly through your quest to save the world. As a result, most games know to treat the occasion of your untimely game over in a breezy manner. Quick fade to black and white, perhaps some light disemboweling, and before you know it, you're back at the checkpoint ready to try again. But occasionally, a game will come along for which a quick respawn is not enough. Games that feel the need to drive home the terrible, horrifying consequences of your failure, with a savage game over so grim that it makes the one from the moon from Majora's Mask look like a bloody picnic. <coughs> Just try to forget these absurdly bleak game over scenes, and beware spoilers for the following. Elite Beat Agents is a colourful and stylish rhythm action game in which a secret agency used the power of song and dance to help those in need. And if we've successfully summed up the general vibe there, you'll probably be thinking that this isn't the kind of game where you're likely to suffer surprise emotional scarring. But how wrong you'd be! Just look to the game's 12th mission, A Christmas Wish. This mission introduces the player to 12-year-old Lucy, whose dad went on a trip promising to make it home for Christmas, but got killed in an accident and so never returned. Lucy's plea is for her father to come home one more time, a cry heard by the Elite Beat agents who descend with their usual toe-tapping problem-solving, this time set to a Nintendo DSified version of 1984 ballad You're the Inspiration by Chicago. The kind of love to last Several minutes of soft rock rhythm action later, the powerful necromancy of the Elite Beat agents has saved the day, making Lucy's wish come true by summoning a ghostly version of her father, who arrives with a teddy bear and one last hug. You bring But that's the best case scenario, because the story played out in each of Elite Beat's scenarios shifts on the fly depending on how well you're doing. For instance, when you're nailing the first verse, Lucy and her mum may come across a charming photo in the late father's diary that reminds them they were always on his mind. Always on my mind. But if you're screwing up, the same thing happens, but now the photo in the journal is, well, it, it's a different photo. In my heart, in my soul. So your performance, or lack thereof, comes with consequences, and nowhere is that more keenly felt than in what happens if you do badly enough in Mission 12 to fail entirely in your quest to deliver Lucy's Christmas gift. Should this happen, Elite Beat Agents has an absolutely day-ruining game over up its sleeve, whereby instead of getting a festive visit from Ghost Dad, the game jumps forward ten years to check in on Lucy and her mum a decade after their devastating loss. And they're not doing well.
expect the sight of Lucy clutching her childhood bear in grief to stay with you for approximately your whole life. Merry Christmas to you too, Elite Beat Agents. The Star Wars franchise is as impossible to escape as a Sarlacc pit, because even if you've never seen any of the films, us Star Wars fans never shut up about it. Also toys, theme parks, the total saturation of popular culture. Therefore, you'll know that in the events of Star Wars A New Hope, Luke Skywalker blows up the Death Star, the humongous space station built by the Empire that has the power to destroy planets. Luke's actions save a major Rebel Alliance base from destruction and put a spanner in the works for Darth Vader et al, turning this movie into the highly marketable conflict between Sith and Jedi that it's known as today. However, should you play these events in a video game, the triumphant destruction of the Death Star is not a guaranteed thing. Star Wars Rebel Assault is a game full of high-speed, high-risk piloting, so there are plenty of harsh game overs. Damn, we can't help Rookie One now. We have to go. Launch! Oh, so you're not even going to check I'm dead? Thanks. But the darkest game over in Rebel Assault takes place if you get blown to smithereens in the trenches of the Death Star, or fail to hit the exhaust port with your proton torpedoes. This allows the Death Star to actually fire and... Oh no! The destruction of Yavin left the Alliance helpless against the ruthless power of the Empire. The Death Star continued to extinguish rebel bases throughout the galaxy, and the Alliance was defeated. Yes, turns out the secret moon base of Yavin 4 was the first domino that needed to fall in order for the evil Empire forces to win, allowing the dark side to completely take over the galaxy and deny you victory. I don't think anything could scar a Star Wars fan more. <laughs> Jesus, you killed R2! Stand corrected. Defense attorney Phoenix Wright is no stranger to impossible situations. For instance, maintaining those perfect hair spikes when he's sweating quite so much. But no impossible situation in his impressive legal career has ever matched the tangle Phoenix finds himself in at the end of Farewell My Turnabout, the final case in Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice For All. Why? Because here Phoenix's plucky assistant Maya has been kidnapped by an assassin one who has been contracted to kill her unless defendant Matt Ongard is declared not guilty. Problem is, Ongard is actually the baddie, so the only way to save Maya would mean that an innocent woman, Adrian Andrews, gets condemned in his place. Eventually, Phoenix gets a break in the case, through a whole web of intrigue too complex to get into here. But if we tell you one of the many factors is a hidden camera inside a nine-foot-tall stuffed bear, you'll probably agree that it's too complex to get into here. The key thing is that now you are only a few button taps away from what Phoenix describes as a miracle, the seemingly impossible outcome of both saving Maya from the assassin Shelley De Killer and ensuring Matt Ongard gets his comeuppance, but the judge will only give you one attempt to get it right. Get it right and it's all hugs, good vibes and happy reunions. Get it wrong, however, and the game has a special kind of hell waiting for Phoenix in this staggeringly bleak game over scene that is notable both for its length and for a typo in the English translation that's made the phrase the miracle never happen into something of a meme. But then I guess when you're watching this unfold, you need any chuckles you can get.
Absolutely savage. Indeed, the only thing more depressing is seeing the same thing in the HD remake. Oh no, the grief has so many more pixels now. Oh what, they fixed the typo? Now it's even worse! I have planted, at two dozen strategic positions around the globe, devices which, when activated, will detonate, causing enormous explosions. Huge masses of ice will plunge into the sea as tsunamis terrorize the coastline. Before Bruce Wayne hit the highs of the Batman Arkham series, he was dragged through the lows of Batman Dark Tomorrow. Ivy. 29 on Metacritic. Seems high. You fight a number of classic Batman villains, and at the end of the game you face immortal Ra's al Ghul, who reveals he's rigged explosives around the planet to dramatically and instantly raise sea levels. His goal? To wash away all coastal cities, including Metropolis and Gotham, in order to lower the world's population, lower pollution, and let nature heal. Because nothing says let nature heal like blowing up where all the endangered polar bears live. Batman is none too impressed with Raish's plan, which is like something Thanos would cook up if he couldn't be asked to collect the Infinity Stones. The death and destruction that you speak of will only bring about a dark tomorrow. He said the thing! He said the thing! So of course, in true Dark Knight fashion, Batman tries to stop Raish enacting his plan by having a sword fight with him? There are two ways to fail this last fight for a terrible game over. First is of course, dying. And second is failing to sneak around Raish's base and disengage the weapon systems before confronting him. Why? Well, whatever the outcome of the duel, Raish will still press the button. So shall it be. If you've not done the homework and disengaged the weapons beforehand, Raish succeeds in his evil plan even if you beat him, and poor Batman has to watch it happen with his little shocked Pikachu face. Instead of saving the world, you watch live feeds of giant tsunamis wiping out Metropolis and Gotham on screen as Batman goes full Hayden Christensen. No! Yikes. But to be fair, this is only a marginally worse game over than if you remembered to mess with the weapons but died. Surprise. Bask in your glory while it lasts, Detective. It is only a momentary victory. How long will it take to reverse the damage? We can have the machines operational in 17 hours. Don't worry, Bats. You were in a good game eventually. The village is dying. The signs are everywhere. Withering crops. Dying Brahmin. Life in the irradiated wasteland of isometric RPG Fallout 2 is absolutely punishing enough, without death also having to be a massive kick in the shins. After all, when you're not cowering in a gloomy vault, you're up on the surface where the best case scenario is the giant scorpion out for your blood doesn't kill you, just poisons and hurts you very badly. Nevertheless, it is into this harsh world that you must journey if you want to find the Gek, a magic briefcase full of science that promises to terraform your crappy nuclear reality into something livable, thereby saving your village. This will be your quest. Brutal, but not as brutal as what happens if you ever die in Fallout 2, which, let's face it, you will. This being an inscrutable 22-year-old game where you can get kicked to death by the first real enemy before you can say, wait, which of these buttons do I have to right-click in order to not get kicked to death by the first real enemy? Upon which... The Wasteland has claimed your life.
Arroyo attempts to send out others to search for the Gek, but they die quickly, and the village soon follows. That's right, Fallout 2 can't just warp you back to your last save. It first feels the need to have a narrator describe in detail exactly how badly you effed up, over that image of a bleached skull, presumably yours, decomposing in the wasteland. You have died. Your village is lost, doomed to die of starvation. These hugely depressing game overs range from the relatively pithy to the ludicrously detailed and dark. I mean, seriously, I hope the voice actor got paid by the hour for these. Your death has sealed the fate of everyone else on Earth. The Enclave triumphs, releasing the FEV virus into the atmosphere. Millions die, and the Earth falls silent again. Alright, fine, Fallout 2, you've made your point. We'll stop dying, just as soon as we figure out how exactly to set a timer on and then deploy these plastic explosives. The Wasteland has claimed your life. Hmm, probably not like that. Well, come on. This is the great hero of the Kilrathi War, who has betrayed the Confederation and now fights for the union of border worlds. I fight as I always have, on the side of peace and honour. Space combat game Wing Commander 4 The Price of Freedom has you playing as Luke Skywalker, I mean Christopher Blair, a retired colonel brought back into active service by Biff from Back to the Future. Da 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 da, Colonel Christopher Blair, Confederation Space Force Reserves. It's my duty to inform you you are being recalled to active military service. Haven't you heard, Maniac? The war is over. In between the shooty shooty spacey spacey parts of the game, conversations you had with characters would influence how people treated you and how the story would go. Like Mass Effect. But in 1996. And with even more awkward pauses. This thing could be very useful. Get her ready, pliers. Might come in handy. You got it, kid. The most important of all these choose-your-own conversations came right at the end of the game. After discovering that Army Boss Admiral Jeffrey Tolwyn was actually the bad guy all along, you had to crash a speech of his. There is a cancer that needs to be cut out. Seize that man! It was up to you to choose the correct responses to try and expose the treachery of your boss in a tense mile-a-minute debate. Do you really believe that this chamber is that ignorant? You're not sucking me in. Like Tamagotchis and the music of New Kids on the Block, this was impressive in the 90s. We were easily pleased back then. Get it right and you were awarded with Gimli from Lord of the Rings taking your side God, everyone's in this, and Tolwyn's plan to turn your people into murderous rulers of the galaxy being exposed in front of everyone. If we continue to perfect our methods of killing... I think we've had enough. And my axe! However, should you choose the wrong options in this crucial moment, for example, try to go in quietly rather than seize the moment, the room turns against you, you're made out to be a traitor, and you lose the game. Remove that turncoat! Wait, he has a hammer now? What happened to his axe? Time to play through this scene again, right? Wrong. First you are made to watch a harrowing cutscene where poor Mark Hamill is locked in a jail cell before being slowly led to his execution. Blindfold? No. Ready. Aim. Fire. So long as Biff made it out. He's all right. He's got that sports almanac. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got four queens. Four queens! <laughs> Warning. Warning. UFO detected. The venerable XCOM series may have evolved graphically over the decades, but its core principles have remained unchanged. Strategic gameplay centered on protecting Earth from invading alien forces, and extremely OTT game over scenes when you fail to do that. Mm. 
both of these principles arrived fully formed in the MS-DOS version of the original game, XCOM UFO Defense, where your job was to monitor the entire globe for UFO activity, building bases and scrambling fighters to intercept alien aggressors when they appeared. Meanwhile, on the ground, you were also in charge of manoeuvring individual troops in battle against the extraterrestrial menace, trying to place troops strategically or reviewing attack accuracy percentages to determine whether, for instance, one of your grunts would be better off going for a distance headshot or deploying a throne weapon. Let's try throne. Ah, kind of thought that might be a grenade, to be honest. Of course, if that's the level of organised defence you bring to the table, it won't be long before the XCOM project is running in financial deficit, maybe because you keep throwing all your assault rifles at the aliens, and when things go sideways for long enough, it's a game over, in the most extra way possible. First, you'll be told that funding nations have lost faith in XCOM, with nations deciding to negotiate with the alien visitors on an individual basis. Which sucks. Damn. Guess we really screwed up. Then you are informed that those funding nations signed treaties with the aliens, but that the aliens betrayed that trust and have quote, other plans? Crap. Guess we really, really screwed up. Time to try again. Uh, oh, we're not done. Um, okay. Seems the aliens destroyed cities and poisoned the air and sea. Vastly superior technology. Suffer terrible mutations. Uh, okay, XCOM, seriously, we get the picture. You, you can stop now. Nope, nope. Guess we have to see what's left of humanity in the wake of our catastrophic failure. Grim. Let's look on the bright side, though. These mutants are well-placed to lead a resistance fight against the alien forces. I mean, with four arms, you could throw twice as many assault rifles. Yeah, they'll think twice. So those were seven of the bleakest and darkest game overs that we will never recover from. I'm going to have to go and have a lie down after this, I'll be honest. Don't know how much it will help, but hey, maybe what might help is uh, your suggestions in the comments for any more. We can't guarantee that they'll be removed from your nightmares, but hey, we might make another video out of them and make some jokes to try and make us all feel better, maybe. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hey, do all the like and subscribe stuff. You know the drill, you fabulous people. And check out our other videos such as our fabulous tabletop series Blades in the Dark but in the meantime take care of yourselves 